Plattner, and I'm a senior studying natural resources at Cornell University. Ever since I was little, I've always wanted to be on the ocean. I grew up in an area a lot like upstate New York, lots of forests and trees, but the one thing I always wanted was to be in tide pools or on a sailboat. This past spring, I also got to study in Baja California, Sur in Mexico. While I was there, I did a research project on gray whales and their bioacoustics. First thing I want to do is tell you what is a whale. Whales are mammals. They're very different from fish. If you think about it, fish swim in their, with their body pattern like this, whereas whales are more like us, and they swim like this with their hips bending the way humans would. Whales give birth to live babies the way mammals do. They don't use eggs like fish, and their babies drink their mother's milk, and their babies are born with hair, which are all characteristics of mammals. All whales and dolphins are within the same order, cetaceans, which is C-E-T-A-C-E-A-N. There are many ways in which whales and dolphins are adapted for living in water, because if you think about it, all other mammals live on land, in the terrestrial environment. They have a thick layer of blubber, or fat tissue, that keeps them warm in the cold water. They have flippers and flukes instead of arms and legs, so the flippers can help them maneuver within the water, and the fluke is a really, really powerful tail fin that can give them forward pressure to gain speed. There are two types of whales and dolphins, and they're not whales and dolphins as you'd think, but they are baleen whales and toothed whales. Baleen whales include whales that have a specialized mouth part that allows them to feed on itty bitty little creatures called krill or plankton. Baleen whales have a unique feeding strategy in which they use carotinous plates called baleen to take in large amounts of fish and water and then they push the water out leaving the krill or plankton or shrimp that they want to eat. They also have two blowholes whereas toothed whales have one and baleen whales are known for making really long migrations. While I was studying the gray whales in Mexico, we actually got to see a gray whale feeding. And in this video, the gray whale is coming up out of the water and turning on its side in order to take in shrimp that's floating near the water. This is really unique because this video was taken in April and normally the gray whales have migrated back north by March or April. This means that the whale might not migrate back north this year. Tooth whales are different than baleen whales because they have teeth, and they eat a lot larger animals. Little dolphins, like striped dolphins, will eat little schools of fish, but the sperm whale, which is the largest species of whale, dives extremely deep into the water and eats giant squid. Sperm whales often have huge scars on their bodies because they're wrestling giant squid deep in the ocean. While I was in Mexico, the project that I worked on was on the bioacoustics of gray whales. If you think about it, whales are living in dark, cloudy water, and the sense of sight is not how they can navigate and find their way around. They use echolocation, similar to bats flying around at night. Whales send signals or vibrations through the water, and when the vibrations hit an object and come back to them, they can feel the echo of the vibration, and they can tell where things are located around their bodies or where fellow whales are. So they use this echolocation to navigate so they don't run into things, but they also use it to communicate with each other, and that's what I was studying. I was trying to figure out how gray whales communicate their behavioral ecology, what whales were doing when they were making certain calls to see if we can figure out their language or how they talk to each other. I took a lot of recordings and then I would bring these recordings back and listen to them and I'd look at my notes that I took in the field and try to figure out when they were making certain calls. The first call I want to play for you is a gray whale mother and calf talking. Now these calls are very different from what you'd think of your, as your dory from Finding Nemo trying to imitate a whale call. Gray whales use clicks to communicate and different frequencies and intervals of clicks mean different things. So listen closely.
This next call that I want to play for you is a very different gray whale call than the first one. Listen closely. So to me, that sounds like air or bubbles in the water. And that's exactly what I think it is. When I heard this call, I saw bubbles coming up to the surface of the water and a mother gray whale was pushing air through the water underneath its baby. But clearly, if you're hearing this call, it's communication between twin individuals, especially mothers and babies. Perhaps a sign of affection. While I was recording the gray whale calls, we heard a wide variety of other species of dolphins and whales as well. And humpback whales were particularly interesting. There was one day when we were out in the lagoon and the seas were pretty rough. When all of a sudden we started hearing these, these sort of bird-like calls. And so we followed the calls closer and found that near the mouth of the bay, we could hear humpback whales calling. We couldn't see them because humpback whale calls can travel for miles and miles, but we could hear their calls very clearly. I have three different recordings of humpbacks. Here's the first. While you're listening, keep in mind that the seas are really rough and that beating pattern you're hearing is waves hitting the side of the boat at the mouth of the bay. Now listen to this second humpback whale call. It's much higher in frequency than the first one. Now in this last recording, you can hear a couple different humpback whale calls, and also you can hear the waves hitting the boat again. Listen. Different types of whales and dolphins make very different calls. You heard the gray whales made more of a clicking noise, and the humpback whales was very melodic and almost like singing. Now if you listen to bottlenose dolphins, they're much smaller and make higher frequency clicks and whistles. So now I'll play a recording of a bottlenose dolphin pod. Listen closely because they're much higher in frequency and harder to hear. I have one more recording that I want to play for you, and this is of common dolphins. It'll be a little easier to hear and lower in frequency than the bottlenose dolphins, but very similar. Keep in mind that the fluttering noise, kind of like, is not from the dolphins, it's from the microphone. So now you know that Whales and dolphins are all cetaceans, that there's two kinds of them, baleen whales and toothed whales, and that they use really unique forms of communication to talk to each other. So next time you find yourself near the ocean, keep an eye out for aquariums or whale watch excursions. I saw my first whale on a whale watch outside Cape Cod, and it was pretty life-changing. Maybe it'll change yours too.